Hi, and welcome to Projects and Things. My name's Eve. Outside, it's about the temperature of the surface of the sun, and in here, we're going to make a chair. In this episode, we're going to make a chair from plywood and about 100 meters of this bright green camera signal cable. Let me start from the beginning. I work in corporate video for a living and at my old job they gave me a whole bunch of this old coax cable. It's made for like old TV signals like SD signals and they're no longer valid in today's world. And what I would like to make is a woven chair to try and weave all of this into this frame. I started by drawing the general design on a sheet of plywood. and I wanted to have all the legs and the seat be tapered. So the legs at their widest are seven and a half centimeters and they go down to three and a half at the tippy tips. It's basically four shapes that are all similar. They start seven and a half and taper down to three and a half. When that part was done, I rounded over all the corners, all the pieces that you're gonna touch. So I used a small dowel rod and I rounded over the top edges, the front edges. Then I cut out my template using jigsaw and used a file and sandpaper to smooth out all the edges. At this point I had one template. I transferred that template to a second piece to basically make the mating piece of this chair. And I used a router with a template bit to cut out my second piece. Then it was time to figure out the angle of the chair because if you just make everything super parallel, it doesn't look really good. It, it, you kind of want to have the crook of your knee be the widest part and then everything tapers in. And I figured out that a nice angle is this. The angle of the taper in is three degrees. And I cut a little template as well to transfer that to all of my cut corners. You'll see that in a minute. So I used my three degree MDF template to mark all the connecting pieces. One of them needed to have a three degree cut on both ends. The other one needed a three degree on the ends, but on the long sides. Then for the front and the back, I wanted bigger dowels. And this is simply the handle of a snow shovel. It's an old snow shovel that was broken and I cut the handle into two pieces. One in the front, one in the top, and then I'm making the mating pieces out of plywood. The outside faces are gonna get clad with Baltic birch and also the back. The inside will stay this brown color.
I cut a piece off the legs for the connecting piece to go in between and I cut a piece out of the back legs for the second mating piece to go into. My right side is glued up in a ton of clamps, my left side is glued up in a ton of clamps and the only thing that hasn't been glued together are the two final sides on the left and the right. So now all I have to do is wait for the glue to dry and then I'm going to glue part A into part B and we can drill holes and start weaving. The next day. And I forked up. So as you can see, I have my left and my right side glued up and left meets right but all the dowels are sticking out towards the other side. And I already glued these things up. <laughs> How to fix this? Here's a tip for you. Uh, I managed to take one of these dowel rods out already using this thing, this blue weird liquid. It's called denatured alcohol. Um, it's basically ethanol that you can drink and they add a lot of poison to this so that you can just buy it and mix it in with your cocktails. What this does is it dissolves the wood glue. I don't really have a syringe so I'm going to use this thing. It's a krimpkaus, something you put over a piece of cable, you heat it up and it shrinks to encompass whatever you have under there. And I'm going to use that as a little syringe, dip it in the liquid, take it out and then drop a few drops on my dowel rod. And that's gonna slowly seep in between all the cracks and in a few minutes it should release out. gotten this far now it's time to glue up the final layer of each side uh, what we're now left with is we have um, we have all these pieces sticking out that we glued in we have the dowel sticking up we want to cover all of that and that is what's gonna happen with the final side my final template here I marked it outside left and this is going to come over here and later we will glue on the final chair piece under here and then we will have a finished chair frame. First I clamp with light pressure so I can still move things around and I'm not stuck in one position because the glue will kind of want to make things move a bit. Voila, and that's done. Another squeezy clamp here. For the time being. Again, slow pressure. Now I can add pressure in the middle with a bigger screw clamp. Because you now want to add light clamping pressure over as much of the area as possible. This will make the glue joints stick very well. I made markings every two and a half centimeters, which corresponds to every one inch along the seating area and the back area. This is where the weave is going to go through later. 
So what I'm going to make is this. Here's the example I made. So this is a test weave I did with uh, three centimeter squares. This was a little bit too loose. I tried it with two centimeter squares. That was a bit too tight. So the thing I came up with is to do a one inch or two, cent two and a half centimeters squares. Yeah, let's time lapse this. It's simply in through one hole, out through the other one a whole bunch of times. And the last one. Okay, it's done. I'm kind of scared of this because before I beautify up all the, all, all the front parts, I'm just gonna test set this and I have no idea. I haven't checked it out yet. I've, I have no idea if it's gonna be comfortable, if it's gonna hold, I don't really know. So here's the, the maiden voyage on the coax chair. <laughs> Legs up. Okay, Whew. I'm actually relieved. Uh, let me tell you why I'm relieved. It, it holds up better than I thought it would. It's, it's not painful because I thought the, the little bends in the material were gonna be painful on your back or, or on, on your butt. It's not the case. And it's not even as loud because the plastic moves within the wood a little bit. It's only squeaky against my belt. So I think if you're not wearing a leather belt, this chair is actually quite, qu quite quiet? Yeah, it's, it's quite quiet. So yay, bonus. It's, it's not uncomfortable um, and it's fairly quiet and I think it looks good. So all I've left to do now is wrap the cables around the dowels. So those are fully green and then sand and oil this thing. So home stretch. Voila, it's a thing. It's comfortable, I think it looks good, and I'm gonna find a place for it in my house somewhere. So thank you guys very much for watching. If you like these things I do, then please consider subscribing. There should be a button to do so below. And also here and here will be videos all about making stuff. So thank you, till next time, bye.